<laughs> Quick side note before we begin the fun. Hope you enjoyed the new intro, by the way. I worked a bit on it. I hope it doesn't suck. I'm proud of it. Right, right, right. Quick disclaimer. I am not paid by the Gishelli team in any way, shape, or form. These amps, their prototype, and their market item, their full retail model, was sent to me for my complete, totally honest, unbiased review. And I'm going to be honest with you now, I've become a bit of a fanboy, and I do enjoy their sound. So, take that as you will, but no money was ever exchanged. I pay for my goods, wherever possible. And I always accept demo units to get out for review for you, my favorite children. But I make damn good money. I don't need a company to pay me. And the moment they begin to pay me is when shit starts getting a little fucky-wucky. And I'd much rather keep my reviews unfucky-wuckied, if I do say so myself. So, all of these thoughts are my own, and will ever be my own. I actually have some qualms with their design, of which I always tell them. And you can ask them, hey, what is the thing that Farsal keeps bitching about? There's no good delineation that's LED-powered on the knob. I don't like the delineation. They'll probably tell you that. They'll also probably tell you, I want a different LED design on the inside, and I've given them a few different ideas. But I digress. Two minutes is more than long enough for a disclaimer. So, let's get on with it. Welcome. How are you doing, my children? Me? Oh, you better know I'm doing good. I know you can see. A little bit aggressive there with the music, aren't I? We'll keep it to a nice, subtle volume, I think. Yes. Gishelli Labs. Gishelli? Gishelli. Gish Labs, yeah. Oh, look at that pretty little sticker. Yeah, buddy. That's going on my computer case, because I'm one of those weirdos. You get a black chamois. Now, I would do an unboxing for... You saw the title. But the unboxing is pretty much like... Every other unboxing you've ever seen. For a Gishelli product. The box is pretty much the same. Except for maybe like the 2.5, which might be a slightly larger box. Or maybe they just... Cut out the foam a little bit differently. Who knows? But I'm here to talk to you about the... Nope, wrong one. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do like the Z thing, but in a totally different direction, is I'm gonna have like a shit ton of the Irish amps. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm just going to do that. Because that sounds like a plan to me. That's right. I got my little dude on there. Isn't he adorable? Look at how adorable he is. The main difference from these two, other than a slight modification inside, which resulted in better numbers on the squiggle machine, but no change sonically that I could detect that would be outside of the technique in putting the parts together, which is uh, less than a 1% change audibly. So your normal variance tolerances are well within effect here. <clears throat> so what I think we should do next is talk about the button differences. You have your power button. Now on my prototype here, I would have to hold it to kick into high gain. As displayed. Click here. And a simple click off. What we have here instead, and we're going to show this off really quick. So you get the normal purple, the red, and of course the blue. And off. To turn the amp off, press and hold. Now let's go back into normal light. So there we go. Simple press turns it on. Pressing this does nothing. And that's because it's a times six gain. It goes from unity to times six. 
this son of a bitch will blow your goddamn eardrums out. <laughs> so, Sherry refuses to budge on this, and, you know, for this particular application, I vehemently agree. Doing a press to toggle would be hellishly dangerous. Not good. But, click. You press and hold to pull it up. In most other applications, that would have been your input switch. Would it have been cool if they included a couple of different inputs? Yeah, totally. Like do a 4.4 in, which the reason they hadn't offered 4.4 on either side is uh, Gino expressly complained that, and these are not his words, but I'm transgressing them into my words. It's a goddamn bitch to find any reliable reseller that has that. That is not only reliable, but has a reasonable cost and not a shitty, cheap, bitch-tier product. They don't do bitch-tier, no reliability, products. So that's why they sticked with the standard full size, is it was just simply a more feasible thing. This particular shell is like my favorite. Let's see if I can get you in on that. Oh, that was perfect. Look at that. Black with sparkly red magic. This is the Farsal model. You have your XLR left and your XLR right. Gino and I kind of lost in this regard because some of the people that they had asked and uh, the, other, the others that had gotten to play with it basically all said they much rather look at the back of the amp and the right is on the right. Where Rather than most of us, and Gino agrees with me here, would rather reach over from the front and have the right be on the relative to you right, rather than the relative to the amp facing it right, which would be your relative left. And you know what? This might be a lot easier to show off if I just hook it up, which I believe their Enoch deck is effectively the same thing. Kind of throws me off because the THX amp does the opposite thing, but again, they're some of the people that they had talked to said that this was the preferred method for them, and they were going off of that, so that's what they went with. Outside of rewiring everything on the inside, I doubt you're going to get this the opposite way, so that kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Oh yes, and these are, we know whose favorites, huh? Amazon Basics XLR. Just get some red and black tubing, cut it to size, and then you just uh, heat shrink that son bitch on there. <laughs> Though, oh god, I gotta tell you, that saves me a whole hell of a lot of shit because Marka doesn't stay on with a damn. But, uh, extra gluey heat shrink sure as hell does. So, we're here at 7 minutes and about 48 seconds, probably with, uh, I don't know, just over 8 with my intro. The go no go. Well, it should be obvious now that... This is a vehement girl. I have two of them. One of which is going to be on more or less a permanent hiatus here, relaxing. The other of which is my amplifier. So, yes, for lack of a better term, I am going to have two of these bad boys. And as soon as I uh, piece together my XLR switch box, because you cannot find a stereo model to do that for you, for shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure things out with my three XLR amps. <clears throat> anyway, so we've got the go-no-go go out of the way. Obviously, I like this. So, yes, this is a go from me. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get into the Sonics first. Then we'll get into the technical details. And then we'll get into the pricing. What we have here is the usual house sound of the Gishele Labs amplifiers. If you're familiar with the A2, A2.5 Pro, the Archel amps, not the A1. The A1 has a weird high output impedance, so you're going to get a different sound off of them entirely. It'll add a bit more oomph to them. But if you currently own the A2 or 2.5 and you really happen to like their sound, imagine it's more of the same. You have a bit more oomph in the bass, a rather untethered, untouched midsection, and a bit nice extra touch of sparkle to all the right spots in the treble region. And it's not quite as analytical as a THX amplifier, but instead it's more of a dynamic sounding, sort of fun entertaining while still maintaining 
bits and pieces of an analytical sound. Would you be able to monitor on an amplifier kind of like this, such as the THX AAA series, which are fidelity for the sake of fidelity? I would hazard a guess then, yes, this would have its place in a studio, and that this would be the the transparent film of flavoring later, layered over the audio. That adds just that little bit of extra spice of life, that fun factor. Wonderful dynamics. I've gone with basically all of my in-ear monitors using my wonderful adapter cable. One of my favorites that I actually pulled back out and gave the singer treatment, a little bit of a spoiler. If you have the singers, pull off that little uh, punch plate metal grill in the nozzle. The little nozzle filter, filter hurts the sound. And I played with these P1s on this. I played with my Fox Te Fox Tex. <laughs> Vostex T-Series headphones, both my T50RP Mark III and the Mark II. And yes, the amount of power that this thing puts out on Unity or a Time 6 game, more than enough for any one of those. And it just made, that coupled with pulling out the punch plate on those P1s, just made the sound come alive. So much more fun, while still maintaining a, a breadth of analytical prowess to it, so to speak. Really, really quite enjoy the sound off of this clean, relatively transparent, yet still maintaining that hush of the emotive life to the sound. It's not fidelity for the sake of fidelity, it's fidelity for the sake of enjoyment. The tech bits of this are rather interesting indeed. On screen you'll see a quick little snippet of their specifications. Inside the hood, this is a two dual channel, two dual channel, TI, Texas Instruments, 1656 op amps in their design. Four independent buffers leading into the four differential bullets, bullet balanced amplifier. English is hard. The impedance suggestion of the cans you put into it are anywhere between 16 and 600 ohms. The audio tape potentiometer is a dual gang A100K. That's A100K. RF grade low noise regulators, 12 volt FCC level 6 power supply included, with the LED control of red, blue, purple, and off, of which you saw earlier. With the gain of being Unity or Time 6, the characteristics of the amplifier are a point less than 0.000084% THD plus noise at 4 volt VRM. 4 volt VRM? 4 volt RMS! God English is hard! We get a similar amount of zeros, 0.00068% THD plus noise at 5.1 volts RMS. That leads us to, with the same order of the 4 to 5.1 volts RMS, a sine out of 121 and a sine out of 123 decibels, with an SNR of 130 decibels and 132 decibels, respectively. All the measurements were done on the calibrated Audio Precision APX555 audio analyzer with custom fabricated cables using Mogami wires and Neutrik connectors. They have several case options for color, uh, color alone, mind you. Just contact them, shoot them an email. It is an aluminum case with a plexi front and back. That's all on screen. You can all see it for yourselves. I'll leave a link in the description below for their website. Back to you, but uh, not audio only, me. Goodbye. Each channel has about two rails, a positive and a negative. Each rail gets about one watt of total power. So your normal, your total peak power is four watts. You're not going to see four watts unless you crank this son of a bitch all the way to high and you're just doing stupid, stupid shit with them. So your normal, your normalized peak power, meaning the highest you would normally get in a normal use case scenario, if this is making sense, is probably about three watts, that's one and a half watts per channel, of normal peak sound. Whereas its RMS is two watts total, one watt per channel. And the coolest part about this is I had questioned Gino as to what is the classification of this amp? I really don't see that anywhere in THX. The the THX AAA amps don't really have the classification listed anywhere either. This is kind of 
quoting him here, kind of a class A, in that it's a closed loop amp amp based circuit. And for the pricing that they're going for of less than $200, not less than $200, less than $200, with maybe a sale going on, but less than $200 for a 4 watt peak 2 watt RMS total output amp that's full differential full fucking differential balanced this is not like the THX this doesn't take a single ended signal or a balanced signal convert it to single ended through that triple A architecture goodness and then dump out either a single ended signal or a balanced signal no this is balanced in balanced out full differential they don't cross talk they don't intermingle you don't easily find full differential balanced amplifiers that are more or less close to a class A for less than 200 fucking dollars at 4 watts peak 2 watts RMS total output do I sound like a hypey boy? Yeah, buddy. I've got two of them. These are my babies. I'm doing a reverse Z. Instead of getting multiple THX amplifiers, I'm getting multiple fun amplifiers that probably represent the sound maybe a little bit better in some regards. Maybe a little bit worse in some regards, depending on the type of person you are and the type of sound you lust after. But I've had a hard time keeping my ears off of this, even whilst processing audio stuff. This is... One of those kind of hard to say no to deals. I love them, and I have become a thorough Gishelli Labs fanboy. Just a simple matter of fact. If you like the A2 series and you want a more bumpin' in the trunkin', go for the Erish amplifier. This would just stack beautifully atop it, beneath it. Beside it and catawampus to it. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video and get it out to you, wonderful children. I believe I've spoken, uh, spoken, talked, made the mouth words. Enough about this, and this is going to drag on terribly long, and I'm going to have a fun time editing out all the fun little bits and pieces that I really just wasn't happy with. So I will leave you all with a very beautiful morning. A pleasant afternoon and a lovely evening, my children. May you travel far and wide within the realm of your dreamscape, as long as it leads you back to me, your favorite. The Great Wizard Fossil. Ready, set, and poof. <laughs>